think <coughs>
Valley and not create affordable housing. What we see with campaign finance reform, the elected city council members, the ones that are running for mayor, have voted against campaign finance reform almost every time. We've got three council members that have stepped down from being indicted. We have a mayor that's under investigation. We're having a campaign that was funded. And that you have to look at what that has meant with Jeffrey Thompson now coming into the news. But that, that event has cost the city $40 million already. That's a lost opportunity for affordable housing, investment in our youth, investment in education. And that's why I'm running. <coughs> Seven states, including California, Washington, and Alaska, pay tip workers the same minimum wage as other workers. Could you support DC following their example? Why or why not? Well, we've just been through a long discussion as a city about what fair wages are. And as you know, to help lead the fight to ensure that we raise the minimum wage for everyone, including our servers and restaurants. So their wages will go up. Now, one of the concerns I have is you go to the restaurants in D.C. and very often the people that are serving you don't look like the people in the back of the house. <laughs> so we know our servers get minimum wage. We know that, that they will receive most of the tip wages. They are generally often white and not minority or new immigrants like in the back of the house. But I really believe we need to have a discussion like we did with minimum wage, bring parity. I can definitely see that D.C. tip wages be on parity. Uh, this is an issue, obviously, that's near and dear to my heart. I employ a lot of tip workers, and I long for the day that we won't have to have tip workers. I will tip my dentist, I my doctor, I will tip my farmer tenant, maybe I should, but I don't. But, but what I'm saying is that we need to have living wages for everyone. I do support, I do support the, uh, the bill that, that, that provides for tip wages to be 70% of the minimum wage. And I think that seems to be a fair compromise at this point. Combined with the, with the, uh, with the tips, I think that exceeds the, uh, the minimum wage, and I think that seems to be a fair compromise at this point. Thank you for the question. Uh, as you know, I actually authored and introduced the Minimum Wage Act of 2013, which results in a minimum wage of $11.50 by the year 2016, with annual increases pursuant to the Consumer Price Index. I also championed the legislation that now provides our tip wage workers up to five days of accrued sick leave with pay at the minimum wage rate. We need to understand what the issue really is. The issue is that tip wage workers are entitled to the minimum wage. If it's $11.50, it doesn't matter if the tip wage is $2.77 because they're entitled to $11.50 per hour. We're going to put into the budget this year board enforcement personnel so we can ensure that all the restaurants are in fact paying the minimum wage. And if we determine years down the road that that does not work, then we can take this issue up again. But it's about the minimum wage. It's not about the 277. It's about the 1150 that they're guaranteed to get. Yes, I support the, an increase in tip wages. But it had to be done in concert with that private sector. Because at the end of the day, you know, when I grew up, my parents were uh, entrepreneurs. And they had a drive-in restaurant. And they paid their employees a salary. And they allowed their employees to keep their tip wages. Now, I don't know who in the restaurant business is, uh, who are the employees that are not looking for the tips. Because when they go home at night, it is not about tips. It is whether they made that tip. And if they did not, will the DC government enforce what has to occur for the private sector to pay them that difference. And right now, what we're finding out in our own government is that we are not in compliance. We do not have enough officers. We do not have enough people who are really making it sure that it is predictable. And that was just something that we do with the Thank you. Ms. Gray. Thank you very much. 
Um, yes, I support a fair wage uh, for everyone. I, I was uh, happy, pleased to be able to support the increase in the minimum wage uh, that was approved by the council to sign the bill uh, jointly going from 9.30 uh, in July, 10.30 the following July, and 11.30 the following uh, July. We currently also are looking through the Urban Institute at other ways in which we may be able to enhance wages for people who live in the District of Columbia. The reality is that we have uh, an increasing uh, cost of living uh, in the District of Columbia, and we need to make sure that we bring people along uh, who are living in the District of Columbia, uh, otherwise they won't be living in the District of Columbia. I support increasing the minimum wage for people who uh, make tips in the District of Columbia. I, increase, I support bringing them up to the level that other people who work in the District of Columbia uh, earn. That also means trying to look at what an affordable city is uh, in the District of Columbia. Okay. The, uh, the next question is uh, uh, very much related to 